Baby boomers, those born between 1946 and 1964, are now well into retirement with many making their end of life plans. And while there are certainly difficult conversations to be had, many analysts have pointed out that we are on the cusp of what will be a significant wealth transfer as boomers pass on their wealth to their families. Joining us now to discuss this great wealth transfer is Brendan Caldwell, director at Caldwell Securities Limited. Brendan, thank you for joining us. Well, thank you. I, my father is actually older than the baby boomers and would take great exception to the idea that he's supposed to retire. So I've stopped suggesting it. Now, we will soon experience one of the largest wealth transfers in history as baby boomers prepare to pass on their savings and assets. What are some of the challenges executors are likely to face? Well, I think the, the big uh, challenge that executors are uh, likely to face is they're the ones that actually tell the beneficiaries for the first time in many cases, what uh, what the will actually says. Part of the reason I even have a profession, Teresa, is that parents are more likely to talk to their children about sex than they are about money, and estates doubly so. So the, uh, the conversations between parents and children, uh, it does often take some facilitation. We have a, a very good team of um, estate planners that do help facilitate those conversations. But it does, uh, like many sorts of counseling, help to have a, have a third person in the room to help draw out and ask the right questions. And what role do financial advisors play in the transfer of wealth? Well, if they're good, they're looking after families intergenerationally. And if they're good, they'll say, please find something more interesting about your parents than how much money they're going to leave you. Because, uh, you know, most people are going to live longer than they ever expected to. In my case, I'm hoping I live longer than I deserve. But the point of getting an inheritance when one is in one's 60s, if one's parents lived to their 90s, you've already lived much of your life. Uh, so I would suggest that financial advisors encourage the conversation so that they can move on to more interesting topics. One of the things from a practical perspective that we can do, though, is just encourage that conversation to be had. There are some things that we can do around the edges, but ultimately uh, people should talk to a lawyer and a state counselor and get a proper plan done up so they can enjoy the years or decades they have left. And how will the great wealth transfer transform the markets? Well, it'll be interesting to see um, whether AI or some other technology usurps uh, my profession or any other profession where we are in the business of proffering advice. I think as you and I have discussed in the past, for the human experience, I don't know, at least up until now, there's really is a substitute for the interpersonal connection. So I think from a professional point of view, uh, advisors are well, um, well advised to be as in front of their clients and talking to them or talking with them as they can be. I think for the way that investors invest, the younger versus the older generation, one of the differences will be the younger generation is more technologically savvy. Whether that then translates into willing to make hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars investment decisions based off something they got off Reddit because it worked once a couple of years ago remains to be seen. So um, I do think that we'll, there will be a... Um, well, I think one of the things that is changing is more toward private investments. I think there is a greater emphasis on private investments. I think that capital markets, public markets, really need to double down on what they're supposed to be doing, which is helping companies grow and expand. They're just not trading venues. So I think there will be an even greater emphasis on private equity and private, uh, private debt in the years to come. And what advice do you have for Gen Z and millennials as they prepare to acquire for this wealth? I think that, again, don't expect you're going to get it today, tomorrow, next week, or next decade. So do the things on your own. The single best thing a young person can do in the absence of having very much money is realize you have an even greater advantage, which there is a limited supply of, which is time. To the extent that you take the time uh, that you have available and put a little money aside every month, whether it's $50 or $500, whatever one can slightly not afford, so that you're building your own resources. And then at the very least, when it comes to talk about intergenerational wealth, you can say, fairly enough, look, I've already started my own savings. I've been responsible. And I think parents will be 
much more likely to pass on wealth to a children that take an interest in them as people, but b also that uh, take an interest in their own futures, such that the parents are feeling that they're contributing to a plan that's already well laid, rather than dumping a uh, a whole bunch of money on a younger generation that uh, hasn't done a lot of thinking on their own about it. Brendan, thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Teresa.